Hello and welcome to Cutting Words. I'm Brad Thompson and uh, today we continue the uh, Kels Thorn Gauge series, uh, apparently. We're turned to a series now. Um, this is part of the um, creation process for Wild Boy and Witchlight, um, a little Wild Boy and Witchlight video series I'm, I'm making. Um, and so in the first video we did the backstory for Kels uh, Thorn Gauge. We went through a template and we filled in his backstory of this um, fairy rune knight fighter that was raised as a halfling and yeah and then we uh, see the video for the details there then we moved on to the in the second video making the actual setting this uh, rune knight fighter fairy up and um, and covering some of its tactics there and how it's um, designed around this idea of this small fairy um, that at level three can uh, use the runite ability to turn to a large creature and then from that's then from level five using the enlarge spell the fury gets to uh, go from large to a huge creature which is the size of a giant so it can fly around resting dragons and kind of picking people up and dropping them or just push them off cliffs or what have you um which amused me to no end this this fairy that changes size very um and then the wasp, you know, the wasp, you know, kind of changing size and flying around. Um, so yeah, it's been quite amusing. And so in this video, we're going to look at how we go about creating a mini for this character. So, and this could be useful for um, those who are playing Rune Knights and other builds like that, that change size. And because ideally you want a mini for each size category um, for, the, for this, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, to represent these different size changes throughout a battle. Um, just to get a sense of scale here. So you start off with his little, uh, little gnome, which is the like same size category as a fairy I happen to have here. So I've got that. And then when they activate the Rudenai ability, they go from that to large. Yeah. And then uh, from that, they go to huge with the enlarge spell. So suddenly, there we go. Uh, yeah, so that is three massively different um, types of minis. And so ideally, we would be great to come up with an STL file um, to give to a, a printer to print this mini in three different sizes and hopefully quality keeps the same throughout. That's the goal here. So I reached out to um, a, a printery um that does a lot of uh, good custom mini work uh, called Mimicry Miniatures. They're based in Wellington. I'll put a link to their website in the description below. And um, and got some recommendations from them on what type of STL file to supply them that they should be able to print without um, too much quality loss here when they change sizes. So we're gonna to attempt to build this um, Kelstorm gauge in Hero Forge today and uh, to those specifications um, and make an STL file, and then we'll send it off to uh, the printer and see if what we get, see if we can actually manage to get a, a mini printed in three different sizes from small, large, and huge. And we'll see, and so um, we'll do a follow-up video once those minis arrive, and we'll see what quality we ended up with and whether it worked. All right, um, so without further ado, here is Hero Forge. Um, so Hero Forge, uh, dot com is a great um, website for building characters. Um, also be good for building characters. You can take a picture of and add to that character sheet section there if you want a photo of your character. Um, some good options here. So we are going to go through this quickly now and build Hell's Thorn Gauge. So the first option is species that help helps um, getting uh, what we want here. So we've got human Alf, half elf, where's we'll go with halfling? I don't think there's a fairy option. Do, 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 do. So, halfling, uh, male halfling. Okay, so this is gonna be the basis for our build here. Um, all right, head, it's probably fine. I think, oh, I think that's bed, right? Yeah, it's turned it off. I don't like that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So we've got a few options here. Very, very super saiyan. It's also very kind of fairy here. Oh, that's 
Mm. Let's go there. Quick build, quick build. All right. Uh, so we've got the beard options. I don't see him having a beard. Um, as great as beards are. Um, all right. Eyebrows. That seems fine. Eyes. I guess some of these eye options are a bit weird. I understand why. So we'll leave that. Teeth. You'd have normal teeth. Horns. Uh, I don't very not traditionally have horns, so we'll leave that. All right, uh, body, uh, yeah, it's normal body stuff. Yeah. All right, so I'll come back to measurements once we get, but because this is changes his uh, in the body measurements changes his uh, muscular build, add more muscles and things, but uh, we'll. See what once we get the outfit on, we'll see how that looks with the outfit because it could be misleading otherwise. So, wings we need some fairy wings. So, we got different wings. Uh, we'll go with more traditional fairy, I think. Some cool wing options here. I'm going to make more wing characters at some point. There's some cool wings. Uh, moth, maybe. Dragonfly. Ooh. Very pretty. Ooh, okay. Long fairy wings. Oh yeah. There we go. That's probably more traditional, I think. Very cool. All right. So with that, uh, no fairy stuff. Tails. At least not traditionally. All right. Let's move on to clothing. Um. So it's preset outfits, which we might go with. So it seems like I don't think we want that heavily armored. We want a mini that ideally that work for, you know, it's possible for armored up and unarmored because I don't really want to have to make six minis <laughs> uh, for one character. Uh, all right. I do like having a different minis representing different aspects of the character or whatever. Uh, like that it is a fun gimmick. I do enjoy doing that. Um, like I've have a I have a character that is a lycanthrope, and so I have a um, in Hero Forge I made them and I made them in animal form as well with the same outfit, and so I can swap them out. So that's good fun. Um, all right, this is no, no, I think there's adventuring gear. What's this? No, no noble. I think there's a venturing gear somewhere in here. That will be more than what we want. I think it's on the bottom. It's the options. There we go. Adventures outfit. We'll go standard adventures. Okay. Looking pretty good. And there are options for um, different headdresses and things. I don't think. Crown, Ooh. um, but no, I don't think he'd will be to go. Do want to cover up the face and things uh, for this one? Different pauldrons, so many options in Hero Forge. Um, you can spend a lot of time playing around Hero Forge, uh, but I'm aiming not to make a hour long video of this, so we'll just quickly pass through picking a few things. Uh, I think, because we can change the bits of the outfit, but I'm liking, like, the adventure outfit is pretty good. So I don't think we need to add too much more detail here. Feet, and again, like, the adventure outfit's solid as, I don't think I need to sort of customize it too much. And we're not going to wear a mask. All right, let's move on to the gear. All right, what's in his hands? Um, we've got swords, perfect, that's what I want. Swords. Long sword. Great sword. Hmm. So. So I'm not sure yet with his, in his, in his uh, venturing career where he'll stick with. I know he's going to start with sword and board because he definitely needs sword and board. But um, whether to, you know, Go two hander straight away now, or leave it sword ward. I think I'll leave it sword ward with a more generic sword 
that will suffice. As far as it is to a fancy, fancy sword, we will go with um, some more traditional. What have we got in here? Oh, come sprinkle. Falchion. Um, scimitar. Salted scimitar. Mm. Let's see. That's pretty cool. Plain longsword. A bit too plain. Go get the, the right kind of sword. Do scabards and things. So many swords. Ornate longsword. Alright. Ornate. Shield. So we need a shield. Um, so we got big shields. Mm. Nice. Nice to have some, some kind of detail on it. Paint up. Make it look pretty. Pretty shields. Oh. Don't know how that would fit though. The character. I'm not playing Perseus. Um, hmm. Some detail in there. Very knightly. Uh, maybe some more rough. A board of wood. Too rough. Ooh. I love the extra details. I don't definitely prefer a detailed shield over a, a bland one. Like that. One of those void. I guess I could paint a, a logo or something like that. There we go. That looks good. Someone tried to shoot by the sky. Blocked with a shield. I guess if we enlarge it, it'll be like, look like giant freaking uh, bolts from like a, <laughs> um, a blistai or something. That could be fun. Sure. Okay. So that is gear in his hands. Um, we could do something on. Oh, we could add things, add pouches and things, but it can look a bit busy. A little too busy. Oh, it's not too bad. And in theory, we'd have a scabbard, but mm, again, I don't want to look like it's too busy. Okay, it's not too bad. Because in theory, that's where you draw a sword from. The scabbard's on the opposite side to where you draw, so you reach over and draw it out. So the sword's on his right hand, the scabbard's on the, on his left side. Um, so yeah, that's not too bad, not too busy. Just be careful when um, adding things don't, you know, do weird things where they kind of cross over and meld with stuff. It's going to be fun painting in that gap. Oh, gosh. I'm going to go to paint this later. All right. Um, sure. That's pretty good. So we got a little thing. Yeah. Okay. We don't need to add too much more there. Um, again, don't want to be too busy. Uh, backpack now. Nah. Anything on the back will just interfere with the wings too much. So like if I add a, a cape or whatever, it's just going to meld with the wings and look a bit weird. So we're not doing any capes for this. As much as I do love a good billowing cape. Um, yeah, no back items. Again, same problem. I think we get the face pretty clean on this one. So we don't need to add anything else there. Uh, nah, we're not doing any bling. All right, so for the base, um, mimicry miniatures recommended for printing a miniature at multiple different sizes is a lot easier to do that with no base attached. So we'll turn bases off. So when the STL file will have it without a base. And so the base will be um, printed separately and stuck on a more generic base later. And we can always dress it up with um, different kind of sand and bits and pieces. We can, we can dress the base up. We can stick that on after painting it. Um, so rather than going through their base options having a fancy Hero Forge base, we will be doing that in order to achieve the three different size categories. So that's the, the big takeaway I was recommended, recommended to do there. All right. There's no base there. Um, so don't worry about any of these base options because that's done. All right, a pose. So what a good pose that utilizes the sword and shield, ideally. That makes sense. And also make sure doesn't meld too much. I feel like since we're also sticking this on the base, we want both legs on the ground because it's going to be a nightmare 
potentially to try and stick that on otherwise. Not bad. We also want action in. Mm. Why? More defensive though. That's just opening yourself up, mate. What are you doing? That's okay. Um, wow. Wow. Okay. Not bad. Again, why is your shield behind you though? Um, bit more defensive. Kind of action y. Though, if we are uh, scaling him up, the big giant, he won't just, I don't want him looking up rather than him looking down uh, if I have to look at direction. Because um, there's nothing he'll be looking up at. <laughs> He's flying around and turning big. He's going to be looking down most of the time uh, on people. Um, okay. Ta da! I know we're getting some. Wow. Okay. Well, um, sure. It's not terrible. Yeah, we'll go on with it. Uh, also, this pose doesn't seem to be overlapping with anything, weirdly. So, cool. Okay. And we've got face. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I think a more generic one. But I think let's go with a snarl. So, see if you turn to a giant, rah, look at me, I'm a scary giant fairy. All right. Eyes, I think this will find. I need to change that. Uh, advanced settings, you can play around to try and twist things. I find if you're very careful of that, things can go a bit weird sometimes. But you can play around with that. I'm not going to do that today. Pretty good. Ready to whack that giant sword now. All right. So um, for funsies, we can color this just to get an idea and you know use it for the picture. For the character portrait in the character sheet backstory um so this is a useful thing to do here so let's go uh, yeah boom there we go and theme just good outfits mm, Uh, colors maybe too bright. What else we got? Not bad. Oh yeah, let's get that one. That's nice with the wings and things. But yeah, um, and you can do go into more minutiae here, and you can uh, decals or colors. We can you can edit. Little colors here, but for now, we'll just stick with that. I mean, it's not going to affect the STL file. This is more just for, um, you know, if you want to take a photo and use it as your character kind of avatar, um, what have you, then there we go. We'll color it up. So, we have Colors uh, Thorn Gauge. Rawr. Let's go that. Turn to a giant fighter fairy. Um, see, we've got the booth. Uh, I'll subscribe for that. But anyway, there we go. That is it. So, um, easy peasy. Pretty good. All right, so I might make a few minor tweaks, but uh, otherwise, once we're done, we're going to hit buy and we're going to grab the STL file. Um, and once we buy this uh, STL, uh, it's in behind my box, but it's going to cost us. Well, this extra large SDL download is going to cost. Uh, it's extra large because of the wings. Um, eight US seven ninety nine. Um, and once I get that file, I'll then send it off to Mercury Miniatures, and they will attempt to print this. Uh, three times for me: a small one, a large one. And a huge one. 
Ha ha. And we'll see if that works. Um, yeah, and I'll do a little video, probably a bit, probably take about a week for it to arrive, and we'll do a little video to see what we end up with, whether this works, whether it, how, how easy is it to uh, generate a mini of three different sizes. Uh, yeah, and then there we go. That will complete the the arc the of Callus Thorn Gauge. There we have it. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cutting Words. Um, and yeah, um, do check out Hero Forge. I highly recommend it for making custom miniatures. Um, get those STL files generated and then yeah, send it off to a local printery. Um, get, get around those uh, shipping issues to New Zealand uh, at the moment. So um, get get it there, get it through your, your local there. And yeah, that's that's how you do it. All right. Um, until next time, I'll remember to subscribe so you catch every video, especially the the continuing saga of Callus Thorn Gauge. And uh, yeah, let me know if you like the video with a little like there. Um, yeah, otherwise I'll catch you around at the next video where I think we'll depart from the, the Cal Storm Gauge saga until the mini arrives and we will move on to um, more DM tips for uh, the Dungeon Master side of the Wild Bond Witch Light. So uh, now we've kind of covered everything um, you might want to do for prepping for the player side for Wild Bond Witch Light. We'll now move on to the Dungeon Master side. All right, until next time, I'm Brad, and this has been Cutting Words. See ya.